Greetings and welcome back to the Glenn Alex Show. I'm your host, Glenn Alex, clinical social worker, award-winning author of Living in Total Health, and the 2023 inductee into the Marquee Who's Who Biographical Registry. I am so glad you're here because each episode of the Glenn Alex Show focuses on a different aspect of health. You are whole and all of you matter. And I am on a mission to help you be more joyful, connected, confident, and complete. The life experience I call wealth, W-E-L-L-T-H, which is health plus other riches. And I also believe that if more of us were living in total health or even in pursuit of it, then the world would be safe and loving for everyone. There would be less oppression. There would be less violence. There would be less greed. Because people who are mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually balanced do not intentionally harm self or others. So please join us on this journey so we can make humanity better for all of us. And please subscribe so you can stay in the loop and find out what's happening with me and with the Glenn Alex Show. And please stay tuned for this wonderful episode on the importance of sleep. Please help me welcome my guest, Helen Cernet, to the Glenn Alex Show. Did I say that correctly? You did, and I am so glad to be here. I am so grateful for you having me on your show and for your message in the world. I am just excited to be part of it, and I think what you're doing is so important. Well, I appreciate you saying that. I really do. And I'm going to say ditto, because I think the work you are doing is crucial to total health because without sleep a lot of things can go wonky yeah (laughs) yeah i definitely experienced uh that wonky side effect of not getting enough sleep and the downward spiral that it creates so i am so glad to have done some recovery from that to have learned from that and to share those learnings with others i'm kind of on a mission myself to add the pillar of sleep into the diet and exercise rhetoric that we talk about all the time. It's diet, exercise, and sleep. And I might even say, let's put sleep first because we need to spend the most time on that. Okay. Well, we'll get into that in in just a moment. But first, I want you to introduce yourself and tell people who you are and, and what you do. Hi, everyone. I am so glad you're listening. My name is Helen Cernet, as Glenn said earlier, and I am a sleep evangelist and the host of a sleep podcast called Sleep Lists, where I recite calming lists to help people go to sleep. Okay. Okay. Excellent. And how long have you been doing that? We have about 18 episodes now. Um, So I put out six episodes a quarter. So three quarters. We're in our third quarter. Okay. Excellent. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Now, what what led you to that? You mentioned having your own issues, but what specifically led you to sleep? Yeah. So um, I was experiencing extraordinary career burnout. It was leading to anxiety and depression. um, And a huge symptom of that was not being able to sleep, which was causing problems in my physical well-being and my mental well-being as well. So they were, everything was spiling around each other in a downward space. Um, And I really was having the most trouble getting to sleep at the initial part of it. So like I would have trouble, I'd just lay in bed and my brain would be Mm -hmm. whirling around, going crazy. It'd be very busy inside my head. And I couldn't stop it, which is something that I used to be able to do. I used to be able to put my head on that pillow and drift off to dreamland but 
that was no longer available to me and I had to figure out a way to get there. And so I was looking for tools. I thought for sure somebody had made a podcast to help people sleep where they would just like recite numbers or something very calming and easy. It seemed like what I wanted and I couldn't find it. So I made it. That's what led me to make it. Okay. Okay. Now in, in your journey was, um, was there one, um, insight or one moment where you had that, aha, this is what I need to do. This is where I should focus on healing. Yeah. One of the, um, things that I did as a child was to count myself to sleep, which of course we hear all the time counting sheep. Um, (laughs) and I, I just couldn't do it inside my own head anymore. And I was trying and trying and trying. And when I was looking for that and I couldn't find it externally, that's when I knew, okay, I can't be the only person. It's such a common idea, counting people to sleep and having a list. I've got to make this happen for other people. Like I need, this is how I'm going to bring help into the world. Like this is my new way of helping the world. Okay. Okay. And how did um, sleep help you? Yes. Oh, well, (laughs) I mentioned that when I wasn't sleeping, lots of things broke. Uh, You know, my mental health was not supported at all by not having enough sleep. Um, I was dealing with... uh, Gosh, at one point I put a whole laundry list together of symptoms that I was experiencing and it actually filled up a notebook page. Wow. So it was everything from pretty serious stuff like hypertension, which might have a family suffering, you know, background in, to heartburn and like restlessness, like like movement. Like I was actually like vibrating and not able to get to sleep. So there was there's a lot going on physically as well. What focusing on my sleep and my sleep hygiene did for me was help my body heal itself. So once I allowed myself to sleep, allowed my brain to and my body to process through thoughts and emotions and all of the chemicals and toxins that were going on from being that stressed for so long, um, I was able to breathe again. You know, I was able to open up and think again. I had gotten to a point in my anxiety where I couldn't function. Um, Like I couldn't go grocery shopping. It was too overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And that was a big aha moment because I love grocery shopping. I love food. I love being in a grocery store. Like all the options. I, I really do normally love it. And I it suddenly I couldn't do it. So focusing on sleep, getting into a good sleep hygiene really helped my anxiety and my depression and my physical body recover from what I had been experiencing during burnout. Okay. Okay. Well, t- tell us what, um, as, as um, a regular normal human being who's on a journey to heal and be healthy. You said about doing your own research. I did do some of my own research. Um, And part of that research journey was first just looking for tools. So I knew I needed to sleep. I I, I was up until 3 a.m., 4 a.m. The sun came up. I knew I needed to sleep, but I didn't know how. Like I had, I had lost that skill. I didn't even realize it was a skill. It's a skill, <laughs> but <laughs> I'd, I'd lost it. It went away somewhere and I needed desperately to get it back. I, it was very clear. I wasn't functioning. I would, I'd take long naps in the middle of the day and so all my rhythms were off. And so I started looking for tools um, and learning more about, I, I, I didn't want at that point, I didn't care about the science side of why sleep was important. It was very clear that I needed it. Right. What I was trying to find was what do uh, I do to get it? Right. The how to. <laughs> yes. I needed a how to guide. And a lot of the tools 
didn't work for me. You know, I I did sleep meditations. I listened to white noise. I tried to create and modify a routine at night. That was somewhat helpful. All these pieces were like a little bit helpful. No, the white noise wasn't helpful at all. Most of these pieces were a little bit helpful. But in the end, what I really had to do was prioritize it for myself and then find the tool to help me. I think (laughs) I was on a journey at first where I was just searching for that pill. Yes. And I had to really find within me that I was going to prioritize this and make it important enough that I would do it and practice it and get back into the skill set of being able to sleep. Okay. Okay. And, and what you just talked about brought up two things for me. I, I work with uh, adults experiencing anxiety and depression and sleep is a huge factor in, in their distress. And so one of the things you brought up for me is finding what works for yourself. There is a lot of information out there. I make suggestions, other people make suggestions, and they may not work for that individual. And so sometimes people who are experiencing anxiety and depression and sleep disturbance beat themselves up because what someone else says works doesn't work for them. You're We're individuals. We have all this other stuff that's going on in our lives and in our bodies and in our minds that one particular tool may not work. So I really like that you explored and continue to explore to find what worked for you. Yeah. And and I love that. And I I I hope people really get that message. It's, it's about finding what works for you specifically. It and really is. It, and the other thing it brought up for me was you can Google how to do anything these days. Knowing how is not enough. Mm-mm. If you don't have your why, there's no commitment, yeah. there's no understanding, there's no follow through. And when you said that you first, you figured out that you had to prioritize sleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had to, of course, I want to say to anyone who's listening there, any of the clients that you've worked with that are experiencing anxiety and depression, I just, I feel that in my bones. I had, I, I, it is, it is such a dark and difficult place. And I want to just extend a light and a hand to anyone and say, it's not your fault. It's not permanent. It happens and it's, your brain is plastic and you can train it out of that. It's about making and finding a way out. Um, So I just, I, just send my heart and my love to anyone who's dealing with anxiety and depression um, currently in that sort of very dark place of it, because it was no fun for me and I don't wish it on anyone. Um, The second thing that I wanted to say is, is that piece of, it's not your fault that the tools don't work for you because they're, it's not a one size fits all. um, Exactly. At all, at all, at all. And, and what's interesting is, what I found on this journey was I had had a set of tools that were working for me for 35 years, pretty well, another five years. Okay. And then they didn't work anymore. I was a different person and I needed new tools. Okay. And that's okay too. I just, you know, like sometimes we just need new tools. Sometimes it's fun to have more tools in your toolbox. I think of um, people who craft and like whatever their art medium is, they sometimes collect a lot of that stuff. So whether it's yarn or markers, because it's fun to have new things (laughs) in your toolbox of making yourself get good sleep. It's nice to continue to explore things that work and sometimes to try things when you're not as desperate as I was at one point and where some people might be, I mean, sometimes you're just grabbing at strings, but if you happen to get to a stable place and you're like, oh, these things are working for me, it's okay to keep learning and trying Yes. so that you can maybe understand for yourself, oh, well, this didn't work so great for me now, but it might work for me when I'm feeling a different way. Yes. And so I just exploring that and making 
sleep is sort of a hobby of mine now, which sounds like a strange thing to say <laughs> that sleep is a hobby, but oh, um, sleep is good. <laughs> yeah. Like, like I, I, I like to eat. I really like to sleep now, and I really like to work out. And so I feel like I've made those pillars of wellness a little bit of my entire personality. But it's, it is more fun to explore those things when you're at a stable place. When you're at a not so stable place or a place of desperation, then you're just trying to find the thing that'll get you out of the hole. Yes. Um, and I. I, I sympathize with all of those aspects of the journey, um, but it's just it is it does get to a place where it can be kind of fun to just try new things to help you sleep. Absolutely, absolutely, and thank you for extending warmth to those experiencing anxiety and depression, and thank you for pointing out that it's okay to change. Yeah, it's okay to learn new things. It's we're not stuck with what we grew up with, with what, what we were taught and what, with what even worked 10 years ago. So you're absolutely yeah. right. Thank you for, for pointing that out because people do say, well, it's always been that way. Well, it's time to let go of that and move on. <laughs> yes. And it, it doesn't mean that it won't be again too. That's the other thing. Like it, you know, just, it's like, um, friendships sometimes are in your life for a little bit of time mm -hmm. and then they leave your life for a while and I've been on this planet now long enough that I've had friendships come back into my life. And those are some of my most treasured friendships with people okay. who, you know, I've come back to. So I think in the same way, the the tools and the things that worked for us, it's not about, you know, you have to get rid of them forever. It's just about finding a broader, like putting more tools in your toolbox. You can still pick up that tool again some yes. other time and it might be perfect. But right now you need a different wrench. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. And the analogy that that helps me and that I um, share with clients is one day you'll need a hammer. Yeah. The next day you'll need a screwdriver. And the next time you might need a wrench. So the more tools you have, then the more equipped you are to navigate through these challenges. And it's really hard to fix a plumbing problem with a hammer, but it's really good to have it for carpentry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Like it's can't, you can't, you need all the tools. There's other problems in your life, other problems in your house. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Now you mentioned the brain being plastic. Yes. Talk, talk about how neuroplasticity works with sleep. Well, for one, I'll just say for me, learning that my brain could grow and change especially when I was in the pits of despair mm -hmm. was one of my only ways kind of out of it. I was like, I was very determined to like, be like, okay, if my brain can change, then I can help it change. Okay. And I've got to, and so one of the things that I learned to help my brain change and anytime that you're learning new things, sleep is super important. Babies sleep a lot because they're constantly learning. They have nothing to know. So they're learning all the time. They sleep a lot, not just because they're growing in their bodies, but also because they're learning all the time. So they need a lot of sleep. So with neuroplasticity and learning, because it's it's kind of like the scientific word for learning. Okay. So neuroplasticity is a scientific word for learning. You need sleep to make it stick and to build new habits. So in addition to trying to practice positive thinking and shutting off that negative mindset or like not letting that negative thought process spiral down as much and really owning that I could try and control it at least for a little bit or counter it with own positive thoughts, sleep made it easier to keep on doing that. When I had good rest, I didn't fall back on bad habits. I was able to continue forward on good habits. Okay. And for me, that was kind of a salvation. And I hope that hope around being able to change can be a salvation for others too, knowing that you're not stuck where you are, that you can grow and learn your way to a new version of yourself. That was really important for me. Okay. That's awesome. And sleep fuels that. Like you can't, 
you can't get that growth without being able to sleep. Your brain needs those all the cycles of sleep that it has to go through. It has to go through all of them to cleanse itself, to file the knowledge that you gain from the day into accessible places and to reinforce the habits that you want to form. You can't do that without sleep. Agreed. Agreed. And you you can't be clear about what your goals are and the steps to take if you're don't if you don't have good rest. But yeah. when I don't sleep well and I'm groggy, I don't retain information as well. I don't speak as clearly. <laughs> and and I, I'm kind of a goof. Yeah. So <laughs> And as fun as it is, as fun it's as not it great. Is, it's not going to help me in the long run. Right. So I, I thank you for that explanation. It was pretty, I mean, I understood it. So <laughs> that's pretty. <laughs> I just, I love that. I loved learning that my brain could change because I grew up at a time when we were sort of told that your brain's done developing at like mm -hmm. 18 or 20, mm -hmm. like you're done. And, um, I think for a long time I fell into that mindset where it's like I had found a career for myself and I thought I, I, I liked it for a while and then I felt stuck in it, which is what caused burnout. Um, but realizing that my brain is not done growing, that I have decades left of learning and experiencing, developing new skills, that switched a lot of things for me. So some people would say lifelong learner. Um, but I like that analogy of growth mindset better, where you're just, you know, that you're always going to learn new things. Okay. I like that too. I like it a lot. Yeah. Now about sleep lists. Yeah. I listened to oh, thank you. Um, a few po of your podcasts and I, I had my own expectations. I'll admit to that. And it was your show was completely different than my expectations. And I thought it was brilliant. Oh, thank you. I said, oh my gosh, this is really cool and effective. How did it's you it's really simple? <laughs> mm, it's it's so simple, and that's the brilliance of it. Please. Yeah. I, tell me more. It's so for those who have never heard of sleep lists and that are listening right now, the simple concept is just I recite a list of items and I do so, I try to keep the the metric of it at about 60 beats per minute, which is the way your resting heart rate, right around where your resting heart rate is. Um, everyone's different, but it's kind of in that zone. I put a little music underneath that's very soothing. And my entire goal is that you not pay attention to me per se, but that it's enough going into your brain that it allows your brain to shut down and to stop thinking of its own thoughts and to just quiet its mind or quiet your mind. So that's the overall concept. The thing that keeps me going doing it, one is that I hear from people saying it's helpful, it works, and I'm so glad that it does. And also I have one of those minds that likes to do a little bit of research here and there. So I get to research new topics all the time to okay. come up with my lists. And so that's always fun for me. So the the production part of it is a bit of a hobby that I get to explore new ideas. And um, that keeps it from getting stale for okay. me in terms of making them. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I in, descri in describing sleep lists to my husband, I said... Uh... Her voice is very soothing and it's rhythmic and that's very relaxing. I didn't even remember the music till I listened to the third podcast. It's very subtle under there. It's very subtle but, and your voice is very soothing and the rhythm of your speaking is very relaxing. And you're yeah. right. It, it It's enough to grab the attention of your conscious mind. And allow the rest of you to to sleep. So I, I think it's great. Yeah. And it, it a lot of people use sleep stories. And I found those to be too interesting, even <laughs> when they're supposed to be boring. Yes. Um, lists are not interesting, though. They're intrinsically boring. It's like 
Ferris Bueller's Day Off, right? Like it, like Bueller, Bueller, yeah. Bueller. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> like that. Yeah. Um, but it's enough to if you if your ears are listen if you're letting that go into your ears and your your mind is allowed to just sort of follow the pace of it, it doesn't have to come up with anything itself, and you can kind of breathe easy and relax. Um, yeah, I I appreciate you saying that uh, and that you took the time to listen to three episodes. They're sometimes they're hefty, so thank you. <laughs> Well, I'll be honest with you with the cookbook one by the by the third cookbook that the title you read, I was I was already zoned out. So, <laughs> yeah. Now, how do you come up with the the lists, the topics yeah. for the lists? I have um an a sheet, a note on my phone. And whenever I think of one or someone suggests one to me, I add it to the list. And then I start to see what themes that are merging, because last season I did a theme around um, idioms and phrases related to sleep and boredom. And okay. this season I'm doing my passion, which is cooking. I mentioned I love food and I love grocery stores. I really do. <laughs> um, but I also didn't want to make anybody hungry because there's nothing worse than being hungry when you're trying, to go, trying to, to sleep. sleep like, yes. Mm-mm. No, I mean, that's for anyone who has lived that experience. It's not fun and it, it, <laughs> no one wants to live it again. And so why would I try to evoke that experience? So I'm trying to do things around cooking that I enjoy, but not necessarily food. Like I'm not going to necessarily list all of the tastiest meals or anything like right. that. Right. <laughs> oh yeah. Good idea. Good idea. Well, I, I think it works and Thank I, you. I wish you longevity with, with sleep lists as long as you choose to do it. And I'm going to uh, keep on going as long as I can. I think. I I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Um, so sleep lists is to help get to sleep. Are you getting feedback, um, about the quality of sleep, um, your listeners get, um, from sleep lists? Early on, I had one listener write a really long review. It was so heartfelt. I, I, printed it out and like posted it in my office. Um, And one of the things that she said was that she'd tried everything. She'd spent years, it felt like decades, really just dreading having to go to sleep because it was such a hard process. Mm -hmm. And that she now has this tool, Sleepless, where she's looking forward to going to sleep again, like as if she were a child, like that 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 it, it just had sort of made it a way that she was enjoying going to sleep and she was getting better sleep. Okay. Um, if you have a physical issue that's causing you to wake up in the middle of the night, if your bed's not the right firmness for you and you're, you know, moving around and tossing and turning, my lists aren't going to help with that. <laughs> but I hope that they help people start off in the right direction when they're heading to bed and that they're getting off on their sleep journey on the right foot. Okay. I I imagine they are. I also imagine when you fall asleep better and more deeply, even if you do wake up because the mattress is too hard or too soft, or you have to go to the, to the bathroom that maybe you can fall back to sleep faster Maybe and I have, fall back yeah, I've had listeners deeper. say that they listen to it when they're falling back asleep. Like if they okay. woke up and their brain started turning again, yes, they turn on the list. Um, one person who says that the uh, Pokemon list was like her savior. <laughs> like she's like, I just love listening to your voice list the first 150 Pokemon that ever were, you know, published. <laughs> and she's like, it's it's exactly what I need to like go to sleep. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Okay. And so I do encourage people to try one or two lists. Like if the first list you were kind of like, oh, that's interesting. And you found yourself staying awake. I promise you there's a list that isn't interesting and you will fall asleep. There, w- There's a sleep list that will put you to sleep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and there's only going to be more of them. I'm going to keep on putting them out there. Some people have told me that they like to listen. And then like once they find kind of their favorite one, they'll just like, forward to any spot in the list and start again so that they don't so it doesn't get stale for them so I thought that was a neat technique as well oh okay that's that's a great idea 
That's a great idea. So you're not always listening to the first, you know, ABCs of like sheep that you do get to the Z breeds eventually. <laughs> That's awesome. And again, I, I think it's it's an amazing idea. And I wish you all the luck in the world with that. Thank you so much. I love what you're doing with your show. I am a subscriber. I'm listening now regularly. So I'm very oh, thank excited. You. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now, um, sleep is one of my favorite things. I think sleep is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Mm -hmm. I could talk about it all day. And I know we don't have all day, <laughs> unfortunately. So what is the one takeaway you want the audience to have? If you can narrow sleep down to one nugget, what would that be? Okay, it's kind of big, but I'm just going to say it because it's how I feel. Okay. Sleep is life. Mm. Sleep is life. It is the fuel that you need for your life, and you need to treat it like getting good sleep and paying attention to your sleep hygiene is going to give you a longer, better, healthier life starting now. Whenever you start on your sleep journey is, you know, the right time to do it, but sleep is life and it's, it literally will extend your life. Um, there's great research on it, but for me, it's just internalizing that fact that I need a third of my life to be dedicated to sleep and that will make the other two thirds the best that they possibly can be. I like that. Yeah. Sleep is life. It is. It okay. is. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story, your research, and your podcast sleep lists with us. So thank you so much for having me. Oh, of course. Of course. If someone wants to listen to sleep lists or reach out to you, how can they connect? They can find me and all of the episodes of sleep lists, as well as some additional sleep resources at sleeplists.com. So the list is plural sleep lists with an S on okay. both ends.com. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Helen, thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here and I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. I am so grateful for the time that we had together. Me too. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you for tuning into this episode of the Glenn Alex show. We really hope you learned how important sleep is to your physical, mental, and overall health. So please like, subscribe, and share this episode. Be a precious spirit with a nourishing thought. Please allow me to leave you with this nourishing thought. Matthew Walker said, sleep is the Swiss army knife of health. When sleep is deficient, there is sickness and disease. And when sleep is abundant, there is vitality and health. And I totally buy into that. I believe that sleep is so very important to overall health. Deep restorative sleep triggers your innate healing abilities, brings balance, mental clarity, natural energy, and joy to your existence. You know when I feel the most beautiful is after a good night's sleep. When I am refreshed, when I have natural energy, when I am clear of mind, and when I have a spring in my step, then I am joyful all because I slept well. So please tell me what's more beautiful than joy. So I encourage you to make lifestyle choices that enable you to sleep well, to be healthy, to feel your most beautiful and to be joyful. To learn more about the importance of sleep and total health, please visit glennalex.com and order your copy of my three-time award-winning book, Living in Total Health. Read my blogs and schedule your complimentary consultation with me. Then tune into the next episode of The Glenn Alex Show the 2023 Positive Change Podcast Award winner. And until next time, be well. <laughs>